And a warm good morning to you all. Uh, perhaps a quiet good morning to those of you who've been on the Travelodge wine. Um, and a disembodied good morning to all of you in, in live stream land. Um, oh, what is that? But rather nice. Uh, managing change. Who doesn't want to manage change? Um, I call it leading horses to water because there is that sense of struggle, that sense of moving against the tide. You can't make them drink. But that's not a reason to sort of give up. You know, you can splash their face, you can like push the head down. Those kinds of things are all options. And actually all of you have been finding your way uh, around this small conundrum. And I'm going to take you on a little tour of what some of you uh, have been doing. So this is what I rashly said on the uh, thing that uh, Brian said. What are you going to speak about? Uh, okay. So managing change in HE starts with mindset. I'm going to use a variety, actually 10, uh, little vignette case studies to demonstrate how you're using digital, uh, how that's brought about some change, and what kind of result uh, has been delivered by that. So it's a little bit of a gallop but you guys are clearly up for it because you're actually here and overachieving. Um, so, quick reminder, this digital transformation nonsense, uh, it's full of stuff that impacts things. Stuff and things are my two favorite words, and I'm told that that's the only time I'm allowed to mention them in this talk. Um, you can start at all sorts of places and move forwards in all sorts of directions. But it's not necessarily a simple, logical sum. Um, one of the mistakes I've made is to, in my early career, is to assume that if I only made a really clear and rational case that um, people would just be seduced by the logic of my argument and they'd all go, well, that's fantastic, Rob. Why didn't we see that? That's the obvious thing to do. And then, of course, I'd get very upset when people didn't follow my wonderful and obvious advice. Um, so in my mind, it's like one of those games, of, I don't know, shove hate me or something, where you're all trying to push forward in different ways. And it's a slightly untidy and messy place because your opportunities for change are also different. There are so many different things that you could do so many different places you can start, so many different ways for your colleagues, your senior managers to understand and interpret and hear a different thing from what you've just said to them, which is annoying, but there you go. Uh, and then a very different op uh, appetite for change. So this is the old classic uh, technology adoption curve. Whilst, you know, clearly I am in the presence of the hipsters who are innovators and early adopters and think that digital and change and technology is a groovy and wonderful thing that you've devoted your entire lives to it. Obviously, you know more than I know that your organizations are generally not quite at the uh, cutting edge uh, of all of this. And, uh, you know, you might count yourself lucky if you find yourself among the early majority. Um, I'm going to unpack some of this a little bit later because I've got an afternoon session which seems rash now at this time of the day, but I'm sure that my own wine consumption will help that later on. So I've created this little wheel of uh, universities. Um, I kept it at 10 because I thought I couldn't get through any more. They're mainly British. There are a couple of Australians in there. Um, and they've all been doing different ways of cutting this problem of yours from, at the top, great big, strategic-led, expensive, long, bold, ambitious programs, uh, sweeping round to more and more operationalized, round up back to the top again for some of the more uh, tactical solutions. Um, I've worked with most, but not all of these. Uh, and because the last one is crisis-led, I've, I've spared their blushes. Um, should thank my colleague Rachel who said that putting XXX implied a different kind of university to I mean, fabulous curriculum and wonderful pop-ups and things. Uh, so yeah, the university of dot, dot, dot. Um, 
the different labels are indicative of the different kinds of things that they've been doing, and I'm going to break them down into three simple bits. So which parts of digital are they looking at? How's a couple of things about how that's changed them, and a couple of things about the results that's uh, brought for them. Uh, I'm going to start at the top with Sussex and whiz uh, around. So Sussex. Um, is anyone from Sussex here? Good. <laughs> really wonderful. Stroke of genius. Long-term partnership. So all of that thing around do a project, go back, RFP it, go through tendering and go through uh, procurement and do another project and then go back has been cut out. I suspect uh, it's both a really big monetary saving for them and a um, huge time uh, saving for them. So uh, credit for that and the innovativeness around that. So we're in a five-year partnership with them. We've got some you know, aggressive targets we're, we're going to meet uh, that to show to senior management that this arrangement's going to deliver real benefit, real financial benefit uh, to the university. And the university are um, ambitious and pushing through a variety of change programs at the same time. Hence, I've called it working within the setup. This has led to one or two odd things. So um, I'm not allowed to use the D word because there's another work stream that's doing digital. So I'm doing the W word, web. Um, but, you know, hey-ho, that's a small price to pay to see an organization actually take on board and put serious money, serious resources, uh, long-term partnerships, members of staff taken out of normal posts and seconded into change positions, a real big effort. The bits that I'm looking at are the darker bits on this uh, little circle. Some of the greyed out bits are being tackled by some of those other projects. Um, it really is a bold uh, uh, and major initiative. So I do know that they're doing service design stuff and I do know that they're looking towards replacing some of their core IT systems that will enable transformation. Um, the change that we've had so far, um, we're just a short way into it. Um, but we've really captured some of the mind share of the senior managers. You know, when you have a conversation with people on the executive and they're saying, well, you know, I don't know what to do. I could spend 60 million on this new lecture theater, but I don't know if that's actually a long-term viable spend anymore with all of this stuff that's coming round. Um, and I'm, you know, obviously on the outside going, oh, yes, mm, uh, and inside going, yes. What a fantastic transformation in their mindsets um, that has percolated the spending decisions up and up and up, which is, again, a theme I'll take on uh, this afternoon. We've also got them to think about uh, their reputation. So Sussex is a, is a classic research and teaching university, and there's always this tension between the two um, because the student recruitment always gets a big splash on the, uh, on the home page and the research community go, yeah, but what about us and what about our achievements? And the way that I've tried to square that circle has been to get them to think about their reputation. They have a very good reputation, they rank very highly, but they don't plan it and they don't leverage it. So they push out a story about some fantastic piece of research and it will just be a dead end. It won't have been conceived within a wider uh, reputation strategy and a reputation diary that plans all of this in. It doesn't think, oh, well, you know, this is about chemistry and Nobel laureates. What's the implication for student recruitment within chemistry? What's the implication for staff recruitment within this department? How can we leverage this into a wider thing about our social impact, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Um, so getting them to focus uh, on cherishing and nurturing and building their reputation as a way of both saying we're great at research, we're great at teaching, is uh, becoming a sea change. I say becoming because if you look at the results down at the bottom, there's a new strategy is about to be delivered. So when I go back to the office and finish off typing this, uh, but they're aware of, of that kind of thing. And we've also done that thing that um, you already heard from other people, such as uh, Gareth's team yesterday uh, at Greenwich, of doing an interim 
uh, fixed. Now, for us, it was a much more surfacey thing uh, than, uh, than that project, but it's still given us legroom to um, go on and think about bigger, deeper change uh, and a whole new site. So that's the kind of thing that's going on, um, tackling bits of digital, chipping away at the whole horse, which is, you know, it may not be drinking, but at least it's sipping now uh, from the water and beginning to get some results. Um, here's my chums at Sheffield Hallam, uh, who we've also sort of had a long-term partnership, but not without a, a, an agreement. And the way I've categorized it is sticking to a plan. So if we go back into the mists of time, back in 2013, uh, we developed with them, or began to develop with them a, a strategy, and we've been progressing that strategy throughout. And it's, as you can see, it's been touching multiple points, um, and I suspect other bits will flow from that. Uh, and it's been a real long-term collaborative engaging thing. They know us, we know them many, many, many times. So that sense of teamwork uh, and sense of, um, I'm going to say family, I know there may be a bit over, but I mean, you know, you go there and they're very welcoming and it's nice to be there and, you're, and, and stuff. Uh, it really, you know, puts a skip in our step. Um, what we've uh, changed so far is really expanded some of their digital marketing capabilities. So we're particularly looking towards personalization uh, and exploring with them the foot, ho foot, foot, holds? foot hills of what's possible uh, within that. And we've just gone live back in April with phase one, with various little sub-phases coming in any minute soon um, in that inevitable, it's never done kind of way and beginning to think about phase two and the enormity of what CRM and CRM integration uh, might mean. <laughs> This is taking the horse to water. It, it can be quite a lengthy process, um, but it's a big thing. Over at Aberdeen, I'm not going to dwell on Aberdeen because any of you who were here last year will have heard Mike McConnell, wherever he is. Hey, thank you. Talk very eloquently about that process and myself and Sam Sanders from KPMG speak about the other side, uh, which was a really nice little couplet to do. But that sense of looking from the outside at how the university is viewed by the people who need to do things with the university and how the university needs to change itself from the inside. Um, I've slightly quipped that everything has become digital as a consequence. So it was a big study, a little bit overwhelming study, and it has classically brought in everything that you could possibly do. Um, but it has at least introduced them uh, to that notion uh, and for me this you know particularly lovely result is that someone the executive is now responsible for digital and not just responsible for digital in like here's another damn thing you have to do but actually let's take some things away from you so that you can focus on this so another of the things we're seeing is as your senior managers start to become aware of the scale and magnitude and cost of the whole transformational agenda, they realize that the person responsible for it needs to be more and more senior, which is a good thing for you because the more and more senior they are, the more and more budget they have access to or don't get frightened to when you, when you start to quote millions uh, of pounds to them. So they are perfectly aware of the magnitude of the task. They haven't been able to um, uh, move on that because of uh, difficulties, but um, it's still there, it's still on the floor, and it's still waiting to go when, uh, when the time is right. Uh, over in Monash, so Australia's premier university, so they like to think, they came to us with a, a very particular problem. It was a very common problem. The particular problem was they'd like some more money, please. Uh, and the area they saw the more money was the classic uh, recruit more international students. Not many people have gone down this path uh, with a variety of solutions around little microsites and international sections and so on. They wanted to examine the whole customer journey 
of this, and they identified the crucial role in this of agents. So going to university is a big complicated purchasing decision. Going to university when you're abroad is an even bigger one. And we mapped with them and tracked with them how the agents operate with the prospective international students, uh, where the pain points were, what the opportunities for change were, where the universities could support, what that meant for operational procedures within a university. Um, and we did that classic thing, which is that when you start to pull at some of the surface level stuff, it starts to ravel down within the organization as a consequence because people have to do this and that and the other uh, in order to really make that happen. So for them, uh, they really took on board uh, the ideas that we were uh, discussing really a couple of years ago now about a, a digital campus, about lifelong learning, end-to-end -end user journeys, joined up experiences where you broke down siloed structures so you didn't have to go to this department and that department to get everything done, uh, mixing up different channels as appropriate as you go along and creating something that started to work and it was actually during then that we met KPMG who were doing some internal work at the same time and realized that we were opposite sides of the same coin and started to, um, to collaborate. It was a really satisfying piece of work and, and you know, it did what it said on the tin, which was really help international agents recruit international students to come and bring them money. I mean, you know, the rules are outside factors like Australia's more lenient um, immigration and visa restrictions compared to, say, the UK, but, you know, we can't control everything. Uh, also out in Australia, the University of Western Australia tried a more uh, techie approach they, um, they did a deal with uh, um, Microsoft, who gave them dynamics for free for a short time to do proof of concept work uh, in order to demonstrate that the technology could actually deliver real meaningful change that wasn't just another three-letter acronym that you had to have that cost you tons of money. Um, so they did a shortish project, they glued together the technology in a tactical way between the CMS and CRM. Um, they explored a particular spot problem, which was about um, getting registered uh, interest in the university. And they did it by, if you came along and say, like me, you were interested in history, they would then associate me with a particular history lecturer and form that relationship early on, as opposed to form that relationship when you first walk through the campus doors months later. And by personalizing it and bringing together students and prospective, or prospective student and lecturer together early, they were able to build a relationship early. And once you build a relationship, you're far more likely uh, to convert them and get them interested in coming. It becomes less of a theoretical thing and more of a personal thing. And you don't want to let down the person that you're starting to get to know. Of course you want to come. Uh, Greenwich I'm going to not really delve with because Gareth and his team uh, did so eloquently yesterday. I wanted to call this guerrilla led and my colleague Neelu who worked with Gareth said oh, well, I, surface led is probably but you know I checked it out with Gareth and they are totally coming in combat gear tomorrow being the urban guerrillas. I so commend to you the guerrilla approach. You know you do know what needs to be done. As Gareth pointed out, it's really helpful to bring outsiders in to say, this needs to be done, so that you guys can say, see, see, we told you so. But uh, you do know what needs to be done, and it is easier to ask for forgiveness than um, to ask for permission. So move forward on the things that you can confidently move forward on that you know are unanswerable. There's no possible way in which this is not a good idea. Uh, and get things done. Now, Gareth and his team's guerrilla get up and go, meeting the ever popular vice chancellor, doing the whole Jean Luc Picard thing of, you know, make it so, uh, is a kind of perfect storm um, for moving ahead. And so, you know, with that, you were able to both go live in December and redefine the concepts of autumn. Uh, and we were, able to, we were able to supply some UX 
components, space designs, without having to do the whole thing, knowing that we were giving you the ball that you could then run with. Um, so we weren't having to dot all the I's and the T's, really quick, really agile, really sophisticated approach uh, that is you know, moving the whole university forward much quicker than had you deconstructed all the tasks that had to be done and project planned them in some giant waterfall monstrosity and, and, and nightmare thing. Uh, and you know, living the whole you know, agile dream, but obviously not the failing, the learning. Um, Gloucester Show, so one of mine, one of my favorites, I have many favorites, um, but you know, this is a really nice sector to work in. Uh, Gloucestershire. So we went to Gloucestershire um, and we said, well, you know, you could do the whole digital transformation, massive project -y thing. At the time, we were full of Aberdeen and bright ideas and pyramids of loveliness and, and stuff like that. Uh, or we said, well, you know, we, we, we could just go the other way. We could kind of do what you have now, but better. Uh, or we could recognize that you're on a bit of a sticky wicket your resources are slender, you're being asked to transform this bloated beast of uh, a s digital portfolio. Um, why not radically simplify it? Nothing like having a good little phrase to use. Radically simplify it down to what you can actually sustain and deliver as a quality product. Uh, and they really, really ran with that. Um, uh, so they completely can change all their content governance uh, and their thinking about content, uh, making it much more selling focused. Um, probably some of the finest examples of salesmanship, where, where sales, you know, it doesn't mean it's like that they've just put, you know, those inflatable men balloons outside the university or something. You know, they're, they're selling by showing their best, not selling by saying, yeah, do you want, you know, 700? Um, so, which is, you know, really nice. The change I didn't put up there is they also stepped up to having some of the difficult conversations with, yeah, I'll say it, with faculties, with departments, with colleges, with all those subparts of the university that want their own semi-independent branded item. Uh, and effectively said no to them. Um, that's not a core part of what we're doing here, at least not now. Uh, they've uh, had a huge increase in their applications, which they're super delighted about. We're up for some, for some wards. I think wards are a bit rubbish, but they're really nice evenings out, so I'm all in favor of them. Uh, and it's always nice to get an outside pat on the back. So yeah. Gloucestershire, doing a really good job, cutting it down to what's really required. Um, another favorite, Edinburgh Business School. Uh, problem solving. My colleague Rachel said, everyone's problem solving. You can't call it problem solving. But they had a particular problem. Um, so Edinburgh Business School, the Harriet Watt one, not the Edinburgh University one, confusingly. Um, are the world's second largest provider of MBAs. They are the world's largest transnational provider of MBAs, i.e. you study abroad. Um, and their problem that we had to solve uh, was choice. Masses of choice. You could do it anyway. You could stay at home and do distance learning. You could go to a learning partner in one of umpteen different countries. You could go to one of three campuses in Dubai or Malaysia or Edinburgh. Uh, you could pay as you go, just course by course, exam by exam. You could pay up front and pay the whole thing. You could pick your module, blah, blah, blah. Um, a level of choice that was uh, beguiling and confusing, which in the old website, led to one of the most formidable fees PDFs I've ever seen, um, which also was the most popular exit page on the site. Um, so we've, we've, we had a, one or two full starts, you know, we had like smart devices and things like that. We, in the end, we cut it down into, you know, the big classic questions of what and where and how and how much. Um, so we really work to simplify their proposition down to some simple choices. Uh, 
We gave them site that responded to where you were. So if you came from St. Kitts, it told you how many people were studying from St. Kitts and how many alumnus were there and gave you content and prices suitable for St. Kitts, because obviously in St. Kitts there's only like three of them. But, you know, that's still nice to know if you're on a small Caribbean island thinking about MBAs. Um, the results, I've just copied down lots of big numbers from our contact, uh, Kirsty there, because they're just lovely. I mean, I particularly like the first one, fewer idiot questions, which is, you know, their term, not mine. Um, so many, you know, sites create um, unintentional contacts, unintentional burdens uh, on the staff and, and at Edinburgh Business School. They were overwhelmed by people uh, emailing in saying, could you tell me the answer to this obvious question? Um, and that's all gone down and um, the response they've had has, you know, super delighted them and the numbers, you know, nothing like a good set of numbers to go and show in front of senior management who uh, love a good number and up for another award. So there's another evening, um, which is really, really nice. Uh, Sunderland. So uh, Sunderland, another favorite client, lovely. Um, a bit stuck in trying to get the horse even to think that it might be thirsty, um, let alone need to go to any kind of watering place. So they commissioned us to do some user research. And by golly, they did that brilliantly. They took us to schools where BTEC students were doing sports who might be able to get into a lower qualification foundation degree or something. They took us to FE college uh, to speak to students who might classically go down a normal route. They took us to a, a rather nice Catholic uh, posh school, posh for Sunderland, who were all being encouraged to look at Russell Group universities. Um, they then took us to their first year students and let them recall their experiences and their international students, workshop after workshop after workshop for all of the universities that I've been to that often struggle to find uh, students to go and speak to and prospective students to go and speak to. Go talk to Sunderland, they did it brilliantly. Bless them. Um, so we were able to do a little presentation and they were all about um, sharing that. So they got us in, they got us in twice uh, to do the full report. Um, they, they had it videoed um, and then they, they did a little interview uh, with us afterwards and then they weaved in bits of the presentation with bits of the video interview. They released it as a short form video that uh, could be dis disseminated across the staff. So, you know, essentially, if you were a member of staff there, you would have had to actively not be bothered to find out what was going and what the results of this study with because they internally communicated it uh, so very, very well. And it led to a very lively discussion in the senior management team about what and the extent to which the change, because you know, they were probably thinking of the, let's do what we have now, but better school of thought. And our research really opened up a whole world of possibilities of this is what your current and prospective students are thinking and believing about that and your websites uh, aren't servicing that properly. So they're just in the middle now of um, starting to design and develop a whole new website and again, start that journey uh, for you. And then finally, the, um, <laughs> the University of, oh, I haven't taken it off, the University of XXX, dot, dot, dot. Um, <laughs> So crisis led, now one or two people remember me mentioning this last year, we're still working with them uh, and their memorable quote of don't waste a good crisis. If you need to take the horse to water, it really helps if the horse is really, really, really thirsty. Uh, and at this university, they are absolutely gagging for a good drink and they've unleashed a whole series, I didn't know where that sentence was going either, a whole series of tactical projects, a whole raft of them, um, getting stuff done, moving it forward as quickly as possible in as many different directions as possible. It, it, it is a bit, um, I was going to say all over the place, but I think a better word is responsive. Um, 
but my God, the energy is uh, amazing, and and the resistance is uh, comparatively small because everyone is alongside and aligned to the fact that they need to do stuff uh, and do it quickly. Uh, and it, it really helps uh, us as well because small ROI focused projects are so much more f concentrating and focusing of the mind uh, and easier to deliver than giant, great, multi-stage, multi-task uh, projects that you know take uh, forever. So I fully applaud the breadth of our ambition, and it's it's a nice one to finish on because it, it feels like um, what they've done is responded to that early slide, the whole. Uh, semicircle of changes by just cherry picking the best bits for them, the bits uh, that they needed to uh, most urgently change. So that's sort of uh, it. That's the range of choices that are going on right now uh, across the sector. So one of the things we sometimes get asked when we go to pitch is how can we be sure that your president aren't just delivering a kind of cookie cutter solution that you've you know, done for someone else and you're just bringing it to us because we're unique and you're different. Yes, yes you are unique, you are different. And actually the question that you ask us to help with frames very different responses. Um, this, is, this is 10, uh, it could easily have been 20. And it's something that, um, you know, we never know what's going to come through the door next. So I would encourage you to be flexible in how you think about it, uh, how you think about how to approach your own senior management horse and how you get them to sup deeply from the water of digital transformation. Uh, I'm going to sort of deconstruct in the after this afternoon a, a way of analyzing and planning that out uh, for you. Um, but, you know, for now, I would encourage you very much to kind of think, well, where's our starting point uh, in this? And uh, what kind of ambition in university uh, are we just now? Uh, because there are so many different ways uh, that you can approach this. Uh, and although it is difficult to lead a horse to water and even more difficult to make it drink, uh, there's a lot of different ways in which you can tempt and entice them. I think that's have worked that metaphor enough for now. So thank you very much. And do you have any questions? Which one's the best job? Push your own. Well, yours is sort of my dream solution, and not just from flattery point of view. So you and me. Um, you know, that whole, comp if you were going to do the whole thing and think about it from start to finish, then the way that we did it with yourself at Aberdeen was, you know, a remarkably comprehensive, really touching the size and the length and breadth of the whole thing. Um, so, you know, that I really like. Uh, my second favorite would probably be the radical simplification, because you, for me, I see most of you working too hard, trying to do too much with too little, and I would love you to all collectively say, no, we're going to, you've resourced us at this level, so we're going to give you a quality product at this level, and we're not going to service this extra, you know, that, that last 20,000 pages of God knows what that no one ever visits. So those would be my two favorites, I think. Okay, thank you very much to Rob. Thank you.